So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keiki Alexander Denichi Bailey. I've been renting from public storage since May 19th or May 18th, 2024. And already they want to charge me an additional $3. And I don't think public storage should charge me an extra $3 when I have a very bad experience to share. So with that said everyone, my experience at public storage has been so-called mediocre. Let me tell you why. When I got the storage here in Long Island City at public storage, I realized that the storage unit that they gave me was very dirty, very dusty. It took me two months to clean it off and on because, you know, there were some type of dust particles and as an asthmatic, that's not very good. So I had to like buy hazmat uh, equipment to clean the locker and sanitize the locker because apparently I don't think public stores clean say lockers and um, mind you I documented everything on YouTube since the day I had the locker so but we also been having issues with other guests that's across from me making a mess and not only that having sometimes and it's been a couple of times where I wasn't able to access my locker because these individuals are homeless, yes, and they're not to be discriminated, but, you know, the behavior coming from them just seems very unethical, and they were fighting one day, so I had to tell staff, you may want to go check upstairs, I'm not able to get to my locker, so I'll come back later, you know, and as a photographer, as a journalist in New York City with New York City Press credentials, I have to say, everyone, I'm, I'm not very happy with my experience at public storage because not only the floors are always dirty, especially in front of my locker, I have to buy a physical mop and cleaning supplies just to clean in front of my locker, around my locker. It was so dirty that I had to live stream it and show my audience that the storage unit, it's across from me not only smells pretty bad, but there's like flies flying around the storage unit that's not very good, but I'm not storing any food or any clothing inside my store. I'm storing camera equipment. But that's another thing we need to talk about, everybody. So one of the staff, mind you, I just saw a general manager walk through and ask me, was my experience okay? And I told him, it's okay, but there needs to be some improvements. And he promised me there will be improvements coming soon. And then a few days later, as I'm just like testing out, you know, the Q3 strokes as a photographer, you got to test out your equipment before you leave anywhere. Don't doesn't matter if you're home, at a studio, at a friend's house, you got to test your equipment because you never know your equipment my my your equipment may malfunction and that has happened, right photographers and videographers? We have issues on scene sometimes, am I correct? So it's only right to test out your property. But one guy thinks that what I'm doing is solicitating or loitering. I'm sorry, not solicitating, loitering. I said, me, you know, testing out my camera equipment, it's loitering. Me, like, making sure everything works. Because, mind you, we've been having some inconsistencies with temperature control in public storage. During the summertime, it was at 82 degrees. And I'm saying to myself, it's 96 or 90 degrees outside. It's even harder inside sometimes. Sometimes you have to like take a break during the summertime, come outside to get some fresh air, and then go back in because it could get very humid, not humid, but very hot when you're working on things or reorganizing your locker or your storage unit. But a staff member told me that when I'm doing it, it's actually loitering. I said, okay, that's your opinion. But what I'm doing here, friend, if you pay more observation, is I'm testing my equipment. I have that right to when, mind you, I'm in a storage unit. And he tells me that the storage unit is only for moving, moving purposes. I say, no, it's for storing things as well. As someone that's been using public storage in the past in other states, like Wisconsin, Oregon State, California, I don't think that's not the full attention of public storage. Public storage is also for people that actually aren't living in New York City, that can't not put everything in a, in, a, in a tiny ass apartment, excuse my language, but people store their belongings just in case they need it or need to come back and forth to get, get it. So it's a storage facility. 
not a move-in storage facility where he was telling me, which the other guy that was with him, another guest, looked at me like, huh? Like, yeah, he just told me, yeah, it didn't make sense. But I told him, all right, sir, have a good day. But you come back and tell me a second time and a third time? Luda excessive. So, but like I said, everyone, there's been issues with public storage, and now they want to charge me from $10 for a 5x5 to $13. Now, I don't mind paying the $13, but I don't see the justification of increasing my rent after five months. That's just ridiculous. And mind you, this never happened to public storage. Only in public storage in New York City it has happened so far. So, with that said, everyone, my experience with public storage has been a hit and miss. I give it a three out of five. But I think I like QSmart better. I didn't have to go through these problems. All this false assumptions of what, what I'm doing is to loitering. I'm not loitering, friend. I'm a photographer journalist in the city of New York City with New York City press credentials. I think I have the right to come to my storage, use the storage to test out my gear, and then leave with my gear to go use it in the real world. I think I have a right to sit in my public storage and organize things so I know where things are. Because, mind you, not everyone just buys a storage unit for for movie purposes people buy for long-term purposes so keep that in mind as the panel photographer everyone this is my public storage experience it's been hit and miss so i give it a three out of five if anyone from public storage wants to speak to me on behalf of anything that's been going on please do so because when i call public storage customer service i got kind of disrespected on the phone and left i left a, a very negative review on google and that's a google elite and a yep elite I feel like Public Stories customer service could do a little better over the phone as well. Please always announce your name and, and who you are as a representative of Public Storage when you answer phone calls. It's important. So with that said everyone, I hope this Public Stories review has gave you some light on Public Storage. Some Public Stories are clean, some Public Stories are dirty, but this one is from my experience, if you watch my live streams, mind you, I documented everything in Public Storage. This is why I record everything. And this is why one of the staff have an issue with it, saying that I'm solicited. I do. I got a. I got a right to record everything that I'm doing because guess what? New York State has a law. This is a one consent state. And even if I'm in your property, sir, I have a right to record my experience inside public storage or what goes on in public storage. After being accused by a young lady and other things, yeah, and these these other guests making a nuisance and making a mess in front of my storage, I have to document everything. So with that said, everyone, public storage, you get a three out of five, friend. Simple as that. With that said, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this shares some light on public storage facility here in Long Island City. But it's not this location. It's the one down the street that I'm located at. But there's one nice staff. Your name is Eli, everyone. So you've ever come to the Long Island City Northern Boulevard location, and you speak to Eli, he's the most genuine staff member there, very kind, very talkative to customers, understand what customers are doing, and he's very observational. So, that's all I have to say, public storage. But with that said, everyone, you guys have a good day. See ya.